In a previous lesson, I talked about how the net force and the time that the force acts on a body determine an object's change in momentum. Increasing the force and or contact time will cause an increase in momentum. The product of force and time is called impulse. The symbol for impulse is J and its units are Newton seconds or kilogram meters per second. When we combine all the momentum equations, we get the following equation. Let's try some of the equations we've read. A five kilogram mass has its velocity changed from eight meters per second east to two meters per second east. Find the object's change in momentum. When we extract the data from the problem, here is what we get. Since the final velocity is less than the initial, the mass will undergo a decrease in momentum. We should expect to get a negative change in momentum. When we multiply the mass 5 kilograms times the change in velocity, which is negative 6, we get a change in momentum of negative 30 kilogram meters per second east, or positive 30 kilogram meters per second west. If we, give an, if we get a negative answer, we can drop the negative and reverse the direction. When you plug the mass and velocity, when you plug in the mass and velocity, make sure you remember that the delta V is the final velocity minus the initial. Let's try another problem. A five kilogram mass moving with a velocity of eight meters per second east has an impulse applied to it, which causes its velocity to change to 20 meters per second east. Find the impulse. Since the velocity of this object increases, we will have an answer. We'll have an increase in the momentum here. Since J equals FT and FT equals M delta V, we find that J then equals M delta V. We created this equation because it matches the variables that we have and want. The impulse turns out to be 60 kilogram meters per second east, or 60 newton seconds east. Next question, find the force if the impulse was applied for three seconds. Since J equals FT, and we know that it's applied for three seconds, we substitute uh, three for T, and we already know the impulse because we found it was 60 newton seconds Dividing both sides by three, we get 20 newtons east. Notice the force, it takes on the same direction as the impulse. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. How long would it take for a net upward force of 100 newtons to increase the speed of a 50 kilogram object from 100 meters per second to 150 meters per second? When we scan the long equation, we find that FT, force times time equals M delta V, we're given a force of 100 newtons, substitute, a mass of 50, and obviously we get a change in V because when we go from 100 to 50, that's a change of positive 50. Substitute, solve, divide both sides by 100, and we get 25 seconds. A one kilogram ball traveling at four meters per second strikes a wall and bounces straight back at two meters per second. Find the change in momentum. Now, this one's a little bit different, well, a whole lot different, simply because the ball bounces back in the opposite direction. So while the initial velocity is four meters per second, we have to be careful about that second velocity that's headed in the opposite direction. Since the ball bounces straight back, the second velocity is negative, and the final velocity is negative two meters per second. Since the second velocity is negative, the change in velocity can be found by subtracting four from negative two. So negative two minus four is negative six, which is the change in V, multiplied by the mass, which is one, and you get negative six kilogram meters per second. 
So the next question is, what is the impulse applied to the ball? Well, J equals delta P. So the impulse is negative six kilogram meters per second. In the previous question, we found the impulse on the ball. Now we're asked to find the impulse on the wall. Newton's third law of motion tells us that the impulse on the wall is equal but opposite to the impulse on the ball. This is a good problem to end with. A teacher pushes ice cubes of different masses with different amounts of force. Which diagram shows the cube that will show the biggest velocity change when pushed with the force represented by the arrow? So you have different forces, different masses. Is it A, B, C, or D, or E? Uh, which one gets the greatest change in momentum? Well, the answer turns out to be E. In order to find the change in velocity, you need to know the force and the contact time. So the answer is choice E. This is the end of my presentation on how to use the momentum and impulse equations to solve problems.